Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the proper way to load and tie down your side-by-side -side to your trailer, so let's get started. So before we get started here, guys, if you happen to like this video or you find value in this, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Now, whenever we're going on and we're loading our side-by-side -side onto the trailer, a couple things we need to keep in mind is where is most of the weight on our machine? And with most side-by-sides, it is gonna be at the rear as that is where our engine is located. So you want to pull your machine on going forward. That way the weight of your machine or the heaviest part of your machine is going to be able to be put over the axle. Whereas if we flip that around and we were to back this machine on now we're going to have the heaviest part of our machine on the tongue and you don't want that you want 70 percent of your weight over the axle and 30 percent putting pressure on the tongue now the other reason for wanting to pull forward is just the overall aerodynamics just like on your vehicle you want to have less drag whenever you're pulling this machine down the road on that trailer so pulling it on forward is going to give you that natural aerodynamics let's put it on the trailer Now, once you're on the trailer, we wanna go ahead and if your machine has just a parking brake, you wanna make sure and set that. Or if you have a parking position, you wanna make sure and put your machine in the park position. That way we're not bouncing around, moving. We don't have that ability of this machine to roll. But also one thing I want you to keep in notice of is that I did not pull this all the way to the front. This is a pretty common practice. A lot of people just pull their side by side all the way to the front of the trailer. And I'll go over in just a minute why we don't want to do that. Now that we're loaded, let's talk about the best way to tie down one of these side-by-sides, which is going to be using the four-point system. Now, what I mean by that is we want to have a strap on each four, each of the four corners of the machine going to four tie-down points on each corner of our trailer. So we're looking at the front right here to the front right, so on and so forth, all the way around the machine. Now, why I said that I did not pull the machine all the way here to the front, here up to the rub rail, is because then what we're doing is we're putting too much weight here on the tongue of the trailer, putting too much force here and stress on the back of our pickup, and this is where we might get into those situations where our pickup is squatting and we don't want that. That'll also cause a much bumpier ride there at the rear and could get you into some trouble there. And then of course, we also don't want the machine too far back, that way we don't get into those fishtail situations. That's where you really wanna to try to have that 70% to 30%. That's why that's super important. So making sure that we don't do that common mistake. Now, a lot of people, they will pull their machines on. Maybe they have a winch tied on the front here and they'll tie down just with one tie down point here at the front with their, their, their front tires touching or they may have their front tires touching here and then put on straps at the back. But what you have to keep in mind is, is that if we just have that force pulling backwards, the weight of this machine is not going to keep it up against the front rub rails here. And so if you were to get into a bad situation, you may have that machine pull back because you have it strapped down there at the rear and only pushing up here against the front. So our best way to do this, like I said, is gonna be the four points of contact. And whenever we do that, we don't wanna be tying to things that aren't solidly attached to the machine. We want to go to things such as the frame. Now I know that this brush guard here seems like a very solid structure, but this is going to be an attachment and that's the way it is on most machines. They're not built directly into the frame. So we wanna make sure that we are going to a frame piece. Now on this John Deere 835M, conveniently I have two tie down points right here at our front hitch that I can clip directly on. And then on this trailer, I have a stake pocket here on the outside that I can go to very easily to tie this down in the front. Now, not all trailers are gonna be the same and not all side-by-sides are gonna be the same. So you may have to get creative on where you go to your hooking point of either the machine or the trailer. But some of the things we want to avoid is we want to avoid like I said, tying this to anything on the machine that's not solid, that's not a part of the frame. And then whenever we're tying to our trailer, things we want to avoid is places where our strap can rub on a metal surface. So here, for example, we have a hook here that's gonna go down into our stake pocket to where it is gonna have a full metal enclosure on it, like you'll see here. But oftentimes what we'll see is on trailers that we don't have those certain tie down points is we'll see people maybe loop this over 
and then clamp it here to the strap. And guys, that is not recommended. Even though we have this little bit of a safety link on this strap, that's not guaranteed to hold that on. We also, like I said, don't wanna be just putting it around and looping it so we don't happen to cut those straps or have this come loose. So if you have that trailer that maybe doesn't have great tie down points at the corner, some things you can look into is possibly welding on either stake pockets or maybe some D-rings or even look to putting mountable D-rings in your floor. And last thing we need to check into before tying our machine down is the strength of our straps. Now I have two different kinds of straps here and I have some that are 500 pound working limit and two that are a thousand pound working limit. And that is very important that you know the strength of those straps and the weight of your machine. That way you know you have the right equipment to hold the weight of this machine. So this side by side here, this John Deere 835M is a right around 2,200 pounds. So with the straps that I have, I have enough for 3,000 pounds. So we have enough working load limit to strap this machine down safely. I'm gonna start here at the front with my 500 pound capacity for one. These are shorter than down into our stake pocket. Now here, I'm just gonna put just enough tension to make this tight. Now that we have the front straps on securely to the frame and to our stake pocket or whatever tie down point you have, now we can move to the rear. At the rear, the same rules are going to apply. We wanna make sure and get on a frame piece. Now here on the 835M, they have a couple of toe loops here on each side of the receiver hitch. So once again, very conveniently placed tie down points. So we are going to hook from those to the corner of the trailer. Here at the rear, since we already have the front tied in, we have those straps tight, it's pulling towards the front. Now we can really start to tighten up on our rear straps here to make sure we're getting that same force pulling backwards. And this is where that four point system really comes into play. We have pressure going to each corner at the front, pressure to each corner at the back to really hold this machine stable. So like I said here at the rear, make sure we get these good and tight. So last thing that we need to do is take care of any of this leftover slack that we have here from our strap. Now, a lot of people will either roll this up or fold it up, and they may do such things as zip tie it here to the strap, or maybe even use some tape to tape it here or to the side. But if you don't have any of those things on hand, a method that I like to use here is what I call the loop method, where we're gonna loop all of this up. We're gonna take the slack that we still have left over, put that through our loop just like this, and then we're gonna pull the other part of that loop through to create a knot just like this. And then that is not going anywhere. You can set that there on the trailer. Just make sure that you have this short enough that if it were to fall off the side of the trailer, it's not gonna be dragging the ground, but this is going to stay tight. So you're not gonna lose any of that excess left over. The last thing we wanna do is just give a full one over on this set up here so we want to do just a complete walk around check and make sure that all of our straps are tight make sure that we are good and seated in those stake pockets or those tie down points and also make sure that our straps are good and seated on the tie down points on our machine want to make sure that our rear gate is up or if we have ramps that those are good and locked into place and put up so that we're good to go and lastly make sure and check your hookup here on the trailer make sure that your safety chains are attached your brake is attached. Make sure that your ball is connected well and that the pin is in place so that we don't have any of those problems when going down the road. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you maybe found some value in this video and if you did I just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as that helps me out as well. Also guys if you have any other questions or comments you feel like I left anything out make sure to leave that down in the comment section below so I can be sure to get back with you and while you're down there make sure to scroll up just a little bit into that description tab to check out the link to 247parts.com, which is going to be the best place to find your John Deere parts for whether it be for your Gator, your tractors, your lawnmowers, your compact construction equipment, any of those things, make sure to check that out. And also make sure to check out the link to our other YouTube channel, 247 Parts, where you can see how-to videos on these types of machines. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.